Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snevlin coming to you with another Treasure Guardians teaching. Uh, this one primarily now relates to uh, the way we can use scriptural principles to help with our emotional healing. Now, uh, to start, I want to share a very well-known passage from the book of Isaiah, uh, which uh, most of you are probably familiar with, but we're going to look at it in a different way. And that's from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, uh, which says that, uh, again, this is the prophet Isaiah speaking, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, <clears throat> to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. They might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. Okay, now, again, a beautiful passage. I know several different people have put it to music and hymns and worship choruses, and it's it's a wonderful thing. But I want to show you, and I, I, by doing this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up a couple of things that I've talked about to a certain extent in a couple of my DVDs over the last few years. But I'm going to go deeper into this because I want you to understand you know, how we end up with this passage, what, what the prophet here is speaking of. Um, to do that, I want to return to the Torah and to the book of Leviticus. And I understand that a lot of people, they start reading the book of Leviticus and their eyes kind of glaze over because it seems like it's all this stuff, the minutiae of the, of the tabernacle, of the worship, of the, the sacrificial system, and it's like, you know, and I heard one Bible scholar years ago say, you know, think about it. There's one verse in the Bible, just one, John 3, 16, it says you must be born again. Yet there's like chapter after chapter after chapter in the Torah about the tabernacle, the Mishkan in the wilderness, and the, the how it was supposed to function, what were the, with the furniture in it, you know, the menorah and so on. It kind of shows what is important to our Heavenly Father. So that being said, I want to look at this passage. It, it again it is in Leviticus 6, and it's talking about kind of the way the day began, how it was supposed to begin ritually for the Kohanim, the priesthood. Uh, this is after they, they had the, the tabernacle in the wilderness. And this is what it says. And it says, Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command Aaron and son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night under the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning upon it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and he shall take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and put them beside the altar. Verse 11, and he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. Okay, now you might think, okay, that's interesting. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, here's the thing. All of these things we are told were given to us. The, the, all the different stuff that's in the Torah and indeed in the Psalms and everything, but especially in the Torah, in the New Testament, we are told they were given to us as examples to learn from. Now, what are we supposed to, well, of course, we don't have a temple, we don't have a tabernacle, and we aren't, you know, offering up animal sacrifices anymore. Um, because Yahushua is our sacrifice. But there's still lessons to be learned here. Let's just look at this. How do we get beauty for ashes? Well, let's look at the whole thing on a deeper level. See, the word for ash in that passage is dashem. And it means ash, but it, it, it is kind of uniquely used only in a few places. There's another word for ash that is used all throughout the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that refers to just general ash, you know, like scattering of ashes, putting ashes on your head, you know, this kind of thing, the ashes from the furnace, so on. But this is a special word, and it means the ashes that come from the burning of fat. Now, let me back up a little. I know some of you have heard me teach on this, but just for those that haven't, in the, in the Torah we learn that 
fat offerings are what the Almighty wants most. You know, that is what you, you see this several times, and that's why he tells the children of Israel, and by extension us, that we are not supposed to eat the blood or the fat. So, you know, because he wants the fat. And so it can ascend when it's burnt as a sweet smelling savor for our salvation and in the salvation of Israel. So, you know, there's something special about this fat. Now, we're not, of course, talking in our terms about physical fat. Although I have spoken about the fact that when you, when you, uh, you know, you think about when you fast, you're burning fat. You're, you're in a sense, living off the fat that's within your body. If you're doing a 24 hour fast or whatever it might be, you know, and by doing that, you're sending a fat offering burning in the oxidation of your temple. If you're born again, this is your temple, the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, ascending to heaven as a sweet smelling savor. But again, let's go a little deeper. The thing is here, if you, if you understand physiology in the physical sense, now talking about our physical fat or any animal's physical fat, it's partly it's energy that's being stored for later use, but it's also a place the body puts poisons and toxins that it can't get rid of. So if you're eating a lot of junk uh, food, you know, McDonald's or Twinkies or whatever it might be, and or you're maybe you're working in an environment that's full of toxic chemicals, maybe you're living in a a big city where there's a lot of, of a pollution and stuff like that, whatever it might be, you take that into your system, maybe even the drinking water, and it, it it's absorbed partially. Once the liver does what it can do to it, it's in the fat. That's why when a person goes on a serious weight loss program and starts losing significant weight, uh, they'll start getting headaches. They might get, you know, acne or a rash or strange smelling, um, you know, feces and urine, things like that, because the body is throwing off toxins. Okay, now let's take this in a spiritual perspective. When it talks here in this passage in Leviticus 6 about the idea of, of every morning, the, the ashes have to be taken away by a Kohen, by a priest, and they're the fat, the ashes that were made from by burning the fat. So think about it. If you think, okay, let's say you're going through your day and you have things in your life that are, you know, sad or tragic or whatever, and or maybe somebody hurts you, somebody insults you at work, maybe you have a fight with your, you know, your significant other, uh, maybe you have a, a terrible accident on the highway. I mean, you know, any all of these different things that could happen that are traumatic to a greater or lesser degree. These create emotional toxins in your body. Uh, similarly, if you're fearful, if you're worried, if you lack faith, you know, I know these are very fearful times right now. I mean, people are worried about, their, many of them about their jobs, you know, small businesses that are closing by the hundreds. We have this viral virus thing going around. And, you know, plus there's these crazy rioting things going. I mean, it's a very, very tense time. Um, and the spiritual warfare is very intense. So here's my point. All of this stuff comes into you every day. Plus, you may have old stuff that goes back years. Like maybe you were, you know, maybe you were picked on on the schoolyard and beaten up by the bully. Maybe you were sexually molested, yeah, forbid, as a little boy or a little girl. Maybe you were, you know, you know, you get the idea. Uh, we go through life and we accumulate these these emotional traumas and we need to do something with them. We can't keep carrying them around. And so what happens is, if you understand what this passage is, it's saying, okay, at the end of every day, or pardon me, the beginning of the next day, the morning of the new day, you go and you take the ashes, quote unquote, the spiritual toxins of the previous day, all the hurts, all the woundings, all of the resentments, you know, and maybe some of them are old. And what does it say? It says that the, the Cohen, he, he changes his garments and he puts on another garment. 
Now, what's that a symbol of? Well, that's a symbol of the idea that we're putting on Moshiach. We're putting on Yahushua the Messiah. He is our armor. He is our covering. He is our, you know, the armor of light. And with him as our, our power, our protector, our redeemer, our sanctifier, he then we are clothed in him and we can go and take these ashes and it says you're to take them to a pure place, Tehor Makom in Hebrew. And what's that? Well, that means you take him to Calvary. You take all of these hurts, all of these woundings, all of this traumatic stuff and take it to Calvary. And the thing is, you can, you can understand this in a way that what happens, I mean, you, we've all probably in one way or another dealt with fires, you know, either a campfire or a fireplace or whatever. And you know what happens to the ashes build up. After a while, the fire kind of starts guttering and going down because it can't get enough oxygen. Well, in the spiritual sense, what's the oxygen? The oxygen is the Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach, spirit, means breath. It means wind. It means life. And spiritually, the Ruach HaKodesh is our life. And if the, the all these ashes are piled up on top of us, all of these hurts and woundings, because we haven't been able to take them to the cross, we can't burn brightly enough to do what we have to do as soldiers of the cross. It's, it's the devil's way of loading us down with junk. And the more, the more ashes, if you will, we have, the harder it is to find the beauty in our salvation, the beauty in our lives, because we're so overburdened with all this stuff from our past. And, and I know some people have a lot, others not so much. But the fact is, no matter what you have, you can take it, you can put on Moshiach and take it to a pure place and let it be disposed of at the foot of Calvary. We bring all of our wreck and ruin to the foot of the cross, whether we caused it or not, because we also have our regrets, our mistakes that we have made. And if, if they were if they were sinful things, we can do teshuva. If they were mistakes, we can just say, okay, take it to the cross. That's what we have to do. That's what the lesson here is, is that every day, you don't want to let these things pile up. I mean, obviously, if you've been carrying some of this stuff around for 10, 20 years, then you need to deal with it. And you may need prayer ministry for emotional healing to do with that. But beyond that, you want to keep short accounts just every day. Just in the morning when you're doing your prayer time, which hopefully you are, just say, okay, I did such and such, I did such and such, so-and-so hurt me. Whatever it might be, just say, okay, I just take these things, Father. I just ask you, the, the ashes of yesterday, I ask you to help me put on Moshiach, take them to the cross, take them to the pure place, and give me your beauty instead. Give me your beauty for these ashes. Because I know that's how this is supposed to work. And you need to understand that's how it works. Because when we are able to take the pains and the, the traumas of our lives, the mistakes of our lives, and turn them over to him. In exchange, we get the light of Moshiach. We get his beauty, his, his grace, his loveliness, his joy. And we, we stop walking around like, you know, we're, we got this huge weight on ourselves. Because if you're like that, you won't have the spiritual fire needed to do combat in the heavenly realm. So even though this isn't really about spiritual warfare, in a way it is, because anybody that's ever worked at fire knows that if, if you get too much of this ashes and soot or whatever on the fire, whether it's a fireplace or whatever, it's just gonna go out. You don't want your spiritual fire to go out. You wanna stoke it every day with prayer, with Bible reading, with scripture. You wanna begin your day by cleaning out the ashes and by lighting the fire, uh, keeping the fire going. Because if you notice in this passage in Leviticus 6, it says the fire must keep going day and night. And that's what we need to do, all of us. We need to keep the fire going. And it will go at night if we spend our days conscious of the fact 
that we are facing him, that we are with him, that he is with us. Because if you're born again, Yahushua is with you wherever you go. He's with you in your job. He's with you when you're driving home, if you have to commute. He's with you everywhere. And he's holding you up and supporting you if you'll just relax and let him. And I know our lives are very challenging. Our lives are challenging. But if you give this, all of this stuff, all of these ashes, because that's what they are. All of these things are just ashes. Let them, let them be taken to the cross and let the winds of the rock blow them away. So they can uh, just take a deep breath and begin the day anew with prayer, with him, with scripture, with Ruach. And then whatever you go throughout the day, put your armor on, go out and do it with joy, with happiness, with power. Because once you get rid of the ashes, it's kind of like to mix a different metaphor up here. It's like you know, cleaning out your engine. I mean, you know, getting a new air filter, getting a new oil filter, getting an oil change, and you know, the engine really runs. You can really go. Well, the same way it is with your spiritual engine. If you're carrying around all this old crud, whether it's old from a couple of days ago or whether it's old from a couple of decades ago, get rid of it. It's ashes. Give it to him. Let him take it to the foot of the cross with you and leave it there and say, Father, you have to deal with this. I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want to. I want to go forward with joy. I want to lay aside um, the spirit of heaviness and take upon myself the garment of praise, which, by the way, Isaiah was talking about the talit, the prayer shawl. That's the garment of praise. So go for it. And don't let the ashes weigh you down. Let your fire get hotter and hotter and purer and more potent every single day so that you can be a blazing light of truth in your family, in your community, in your church, whatever the situation might be, because we need more and more of this right now. We need more light, more joy, more truth than ever before, because the enemy is coming at us like never before, and we need to stand against it. So, that's kind of what we got for you here today. I don't. I, I think the main point is don't carry this stuff around. Give it to Moshiach and then let your light burn ever more brightly because you're spending a little time every morning with him or maybe even a lot of time with him every morning. And just take his love into your heart. Take his zeal. Take his boldness into your heart. And let it burn away all of this excess stuff and then take it to the cross. Okay, I hope this has been a blessing to you, and especially in this time, we really would appreciate your prayers. We're filming this uh, in the season right before, right, in fact, we're filming it right on serious day of 2020, July 23rd, and that's a very intense time for us. And the next few days up until Tishba, which is next week, it's really, really getting very intense for a variety of reasons, which, yeah, well, I'll get into in another video, but... For now, please pray for us. Uh, if this is a blessing to you, please subscribe, please share. And also, please, please pray, if you're not already doing so, about becoming a regular supporter of our ministry. Thank you so much. And I just pray the fires of the Ruach HaKodesh and the zeal of Yahushua and the love of the Father would be with you this day and always. Shalom, shalom.